we can take any role that we want. Yes, this role might have been written for John Smith, but every single role that I've ever booked besides one show, which is East Los High, which was a Latin based show, yeah. every single role I have ever booked, including Theo from Escape Room, this film was not written for a Latino, a Latin American. who killed the four people in front of me are held accountable. They're hiding in plain sight in the middle of Manhattan. We need to stop them. I'm in. Hola, mi tu familia. It's Lau. And today we get to talk with Carlito Olivero, who is a part of the new film Escape Room Tournament of Champions. So hello, Carlito. Hola, Laura. Muchísimas gracias por, tu, su, por su tiempo. Gracias. Tell me, how, how did you feel when you got that first call saying, hey, like, you landed the part, you're gonna be in this film. Were you surprised, like excited? How'd you feel? Oh, damn. Well, as an actor, we are always excited every time we can book a job. I'm gonna let you know that right now. I always believe it. <laughs> let, alone this, let alone this film, because I've always been such a, a big fan of escape rooms in general. I was a big fan of the first film, but even before I saw the first film, I had probably done all in all, I've done like 16 escape rooms, but before oh then, gosh. I know I've, I've done some, I've done a, quite a few, but before I filmed this, I think I had done like maybe 13 and I died. You were prepared, you were prepared and you were manifesting and you didn't even know it. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. And the thing is, I was horrible at them at first. I was horrible. I think I died in all of them, and I, but I just got <laughs> this rush because in my mind, like I always kind of try to go overboard with everything that I do. Like even if it's sports or even if it's like writing a song or anything or a race or anything, I always try to take it to the extreme. And I always thought like there was something cool behind these rooms to where if a crazy psychopath kidnapped you and said, yo, I'm not gonna kill you just yet, but I'm gonna give you 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour and give you all the tools you need to escape. Basically, it just depends on how smart you are. I'm gonna let you out if you can do this. I lost every single time, but in my mind, I'm like, I keep getting closer and closer and closer. Then next thing you know, I get the audition. And I was like, yo, I feel like I manifested this. I really feel like I, I brought this energy to me and I killed the audition. Like I've done a lot of auditions in my life. This one, I really felt the strongest and I felt like I did so darn good. And uh, I wasn't in Los Angeles to be there in person. So I had to do it through self tape. And this was before COVID. Wow. This was before it was normal to just do your self tapes. Usually right. if you did a self tape, they really wouldn't want it that much. It was more like, please would rather have them in person. But I had just moved to Atlanta to film a show that I was out there doing. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, damn, like they're not going to be able to ask me questions or give me notes. I just got to send them this tape. And initially they were like, hey, there's three scenes. Can you do one? But if you feel confident enough, do all three. So I was like, look, I'm not taking no no chances. I'm doing all three of the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I sent it in and I did my my due diligence. I felt like on the scene and I booked it right away. I didn't There wasn't even a callback. They were just like, yep. He's wow. Got the Tell us a little bit about your career, because this definitely is not your first rodeo, right? So oh, how did you get started in the entertainment industry. It's a start from hello. I was just a little kid from Chicago, a Mexican rican kid that just was in a talent show every single year from kindergarten up. I was in choir ever since I was in second grade. My high school was a music high school and I really wasn't the smartest kid book wise, but I never missed choir and I was in four different choirs and we traveled all around and all throughout high school, you know, you would hear about these little little acting scam agencies like, hey, do you want to be on Disney Channel? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you would hear things. it like over the radio or over something the like radio. that. Yes, and mind you, you know, all of those things are fake, but still my parents like put me in it anyway. And real realistically, it was just acting classes that my parents mm -hmm. signed me up for. And I was this kid that always wanted to do everything, sports, dancing, singing, this. My father was a break dancer. So I grew up watching him. And then I was a big fan of breaking and Beat Street and Electric Boogaloo and Footloose and all this stuff. So it was kind of like a, 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 like a storm that was already kind of brewing in my mind of me just wanting to learn everything. Fast forward to um, my senior year of high school, I got my first record deal. And I, I this was in a time where my mom's like, you gotta go to college. And I got signed before I got to college. And I got signed to Sony Epic Records. And I was in this group called Menudo. I was in this group for a couple of years. And that was like my first schooling of being in the industry. Now from there, group disbanded. And I ended up moving to New York. Had a girlfriend that was an actress at the time. 
Uh-huh. And she brought me into her agency one time, one day. Mind you, I got like this big triple XL jacket back when it was like cool to wear those big ass clothes and stuff. And uh-huh. uh, the agent was like, hey, you got a good look. Do you act? And you know, I, I was like, yeah, I, I lied. He sent me to my you first- want me to, I do. If you want me to? I'm like, I, my mom told me never said no to an opportunity. So I was like, yes. okay. Sent me to my first audition ever, which was a Starbucks commercial. And I booked it and I got all this residual money. I moved to LA. And then from there, I um, was sitting, you know, long story short, uh, sat for a a business music meeting to try to get one of my songs placed in this indie feature film that was called We The Party. And it was basically like a a breakfast club meets house party for younger generation. And Mario Van Peebles, who directed New Jack City, was directing the film. So I go and I sit and I'm playing him records. I'm like, hey, would you like to get this placed in the film? And he says the same thing. Hey, kid, you got a good look. Do you act? And I was like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, coincidentally, I got a Starbucks commercial on the air right now. And that was it. And so he throws a script at me and says, I'll be back in five minutes. Came back in one. Said, are you ready? I wasn't going to say no, but I was just like, oh. and so I'm I, always I did ready. My audition. <laughs> and I'm always ready, right? And I did my audition in his living room off of a music meeting. And he doesn't say anything. Meeting ends. As I'm leaving, he pulls me into the room and he goes, congratulations, I want you in my movie. And I'm like, wait, 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 like a movie that's going to theaters, like a real movie? He goes, yes. And that's how I landed my first feature film with no agency. From there, I was like, oh my God, I can do this. I can do both things. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I got an agency and then I started from the ground up booking guest star roles here and there, but still recording my music. And then it kept on going to, I would book a, a bigger film where I booked a show as a series regular. And then, you know, times got rough. So I had to get a job at Starbucks and I have fans coming in who know me from wow. Menudo and I'm signing autographs on Starbucks cups and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then next thing you know, X Factor happens. And then this new world of people that only know me from that, not knowing all the work that I've been putting in for the past right. 15 years of my life came from that. And so that just started bringing in more, you know, more opportunities, um, but I never stopped. I like to think that it's the year of the hybrids. It's a year of the people that can do more than one thing, not because they feel like they just need to dedicate their time to this. It's if they love it, it's a spectrum. Art is a spectrum. And I like to think if you can walk, you can run. If you can run, you can dance. You know, if, if you can write, you can paint. It's all this. You just have to care about what you do. And then now, fast forward later, we got these series under our belts. And now we're here with Escape Room 2 coming out July 16th. I feel like this kind of relates to this conversation where, where you're saying, like, there are people out there that have a fade, that, you know, look like me, that talk like me. And kind of reminds me, you know, of the, of, of the topic of Latino representation in Hollywood, right? Yes. I'd love to get your thoughts on that because you are our representation. How has that experience? I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but you know, yes. maybe what, what would you want to see maybe going forward? What are your thoughts on it right now? I would say, my love, um, what I would like to see is a lot more Latinos that are just going to acting classes, a lot more Latinos that are sending emails to different agencies. If you're not happy with your representation, please do your due diligence and look hard to try to find somewhere else. We yeah. can't sit and write too many uh, uh, publications on the fact that we're not being represented because at the end of the day, we can take any role that we want. Yes, this role might have been written for John Smith, but every single role that I've ever booked besides one show, which is East Los High, which was a Latin based show, yeah. every single role I've ever booked, including Theo from Escape Room, this film, was not written for a Latino, a Latin American. It was written for someone else. But then I come in with my fade, with my, you know, with with my energy and my care. My 100% self, yeah. My 100% self. And I show them, no matter what, look at me. You're going to see that I can do this. And even if this is not my job, you're keep, they're keeping a mental note of like, oh my God, you know what? This wasn't made for him, but this kid has got something going on. I'm going to send him to another project. And it's it's all about, life is a game of chess. It's not checkers. So sometimes a lot of these actors feel like because they've had seven auditions in the past month and they're excited for the seven, but they don't book. They feel like they're doing something wrong. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You got to understand that the person on the other side of the desk has a passion. This is their life too. Whoever the casting agent is, they're trying to be the best casting agent ever. 
whoever the writer or writing of this film, they're they're not even thinking about the fact that they don't want to put a Latino or or any other person. They're just in their mind trying to do their job. And we need to come and be the staple to let people know I am here, I've arrived, and I can do this. And Absolutely. yeah, just just keep pushing, y'all. Just keep pushing and know that we can break barriers. We are breaking barriers. Realistically, we all need each other. And I think this goes this goes on everything. There are many African Americans and many Americans that love watching us. So they're our fans too. They're supporting us. All we gotta do is just show them that we're here for the work. And at the same time, if you're in a position to where you can write something, give you know give your due diligence to your people and also write roles for african americans write roles for americans if you're latin so that way we're not categorized as the people that are only looking out for our people no we live in this world that we all need to share or share the wealth because realistically there's no competition no matter what what are you super yes. excited for for you know fans of the first film or you know new fans to see in this in this film like what can we expect the rooms are definitely in another level i you know watching the first film i was like yo this is so intense and this is so genius and you know most times when you think of like a psychological thriller everyone's getting stabbed up with a knife and it's just bloody and gory and it's just all this stuff that we haven't seen or that we've seen before like saw you know um yeah and i think with this it's 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 one of those things to where no one is going to know how to solve any of the rooms and two i love how they basically answer a lot of questions that were left on the first film um mm -hmm. like zoe hopping on the flight a lot of people want to know what happens um mm -hmm. and at the same time you start to think how many rooms could you possibly do until you run out of ideas? Well, I think now even more so with what's going on with COVID that we realize, oh my gosh, that there's a lot more natural disasters or a lot of natural things that we can do to add more rooms because literally we're living in an escape room right now. How was it working with, with the cast of the film? I love the cast, man. My favorites uh, is Holland, Thomas, and Logan. Let me tell you, it was so stressful, very stressful to film this film because basically we're in this mindset of you're gonna die every <laughs> single day. And then, yeah. you know, we're yelling and we're screaming and they're like, cut, okay, turn the cameras around. And it's like, it's hard as an actor to just stop. So you kind of feel like you're in this depressive state until we get off set, stress it was, we would go out and we would have drinks together. We were in another another country, another continent. We we got loose. It was great. I loved I loved hanging out with them. I say one of my favorite things was I was always a dude that was accidentally breaking things on set by accident all the time. <laughs> my character on a certain part, I'm supposed to be in the script. I was supposed to uh, punch this window when you know when we realized that we're in this escape room. Mm -hmm. Now, as an actor, I'm not just going to wait for action. I'm going to do it in rehearsal because I want to know if my hand's going to hurt if I punch this thing. And I want to know how or how much to not hit it. And they said this thing was unbreakable, right? So, so this thing in, in, in rehearsal, this is, I'm telling you, in rehearsal, usually you got about 40 to 50 people all just sitting there kind of looking and they're kind of mapping things out. And all right, we go here. So I'm in full character. <sighs> and I punch the window and glass just breaks everywhere. And I'm just like, I'm looking at everyone and in my mind, this was already like the fourth thing that I've broken on set because we got to like pull the hinges and then just I'm breaking something. They're like, Carlito, can you just stop breaking things? I'm like, I swear that I'm not trying to, I'm just in character. So I think I think those were my favorite, favorite moments because I would always be so embarrassed but um, the cast and the crew were always so loving and made me feel welcome. Then they're like, it's okay, man. You're just the klutz. Don't worry about Aww. it. Yes. Thank you so, so much for chatting with me today. It, it's so awesome to hear about your hustle, about who you are. And I don't know if there's anything else you want to say to the Me Too fam before we leave. Laura, thank you so much first for having me. And everyone, thank you so much for all your love and support. If you guys aren't doing anything on Friday, uh, please go check out Escape Room 2. You know, um, turn them into champions. It's going to be great. And you know, let's 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 support one another. Um, if you guys are able to be safe and to go to the movie theaters, please check it out. If not, I'm sure you can do it from the safety of your own home somehow, where you can watch the film. So I hope you enjoy it and follow me on Instagram, Carlitos Way 89, and let me know what your what your thoughts of the film is. And um, I hope to see everyone soon. I don't understand. We're still in the game. Oh no, no, no. Oh,